Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with Mac Tech, and today we're taking a look at another budget keyboard. Oh, let me turn down my gain. I just realized that that was probably too loud. I apologize. All right, so um, today we've got here, um, yesterday there was a flash lightning sale for this board. I bought quite a few of these kits. Um, this is the CIY X77. Now, I do actually recommend a lot of CIY boards. Uh, CIY is the same company that made the Tester 68 and the Tester 84, both which are good boards. Um, this one, I recommend it as a good starter board for a TKL. And what I'm going to do today, I'm just going to go ahead and open it up out of the box and we're going to tweak it, mod it, um, see how how little work it, I mean, it takes. I mean, it takes a little bit of work, but it doesn't take much to get one of these boards sounding pretty good. Now you got, unfortunately, the plastic keycap puller. Obviously, if you don't know, please don't use these. Um, the chances of actually scratching the side of your keycaps with these increases significantly. Um, use these and catch the corner of your keycap key. You know, and if anything you're going to scratch is the bottom so you won't see it. If it scratches at all, it actually works much better. So anyway, that's just a uh, little bit of news or a little bit of uh, wisdom from your Uncle Mark. Um, and here today we have the, I had not bought this one yet. I only had the, uh, the white and the black version. Now this does come, it's got a little manual. Now just real quick, this these boards do uh, have a rebranded Sonics uh, chip MCU, so there is the possibility of of building a QMK um, loader for this. I have not looked into it. I do want to. I just haven't had the time. But I think it's coming, and you can tell uh, many times by the way that it lights up. If you have a keyboard that lights up kind of like in a snake that goes to the center as you will see when we plug this one in, um, then most likely you're using one of those. So we're gonna go ahead and throw the board over here. So another nice thing about this keyboard is its magnetic shroud. So you instantly, the keyboard automatically has two profiles. You, know, you got your, your floating key profile, and you've got your more, even though it's almost like a low profile, it's still, it's still quite nice. Um, we've got a pair of feet, so you're going to have a total of three typing angles, which is nice for a budget board. Now, this one was on lightning sale. This one normally sells for $54.99, and yesterday, I believe it was uh, $37, I believe. Um, I know I bought one one time for $24.97. Um, that was... Amazon warehouse or renewed I don't remember but it looked brand new so anyway this is a keyboard that I've I've um, I've had a lot of fun with I've uh, modified a few for friends already um, and so okay so let's see what we got here we've got okay I got this one with black switches I usually don't care because I usually take the switches out now I kind of wanted to just I mean I could take these switches out lube them put them in um, and actually add a little bit more girth to the keycaps but I think that's just a little too much work when we can just uh, replace the switches because I mean these are your standard um, keycaps and for me anything less than one millimeter in wall thickness it's just it's gonna be a no-go for me so we're right just below it but still it's gonna anything below one millimeter in my opinion, especially when we're dealing with these cheap see-through PBT caps, um, we're going to be dealing... Oh, no, that seems to be a little bit thicker on that side. Huh. All right, so they're thinner on the sides. Oh. Yep, about the same. Never mind. So one side is just a little bit thicker. They're still below a m millimeter in, the, in length, so... Uh, it's just not... I mean, we could get it sounded better, but it would just be a lot of work because... Uh, what you can do if you really want to take and use this, you know, basically everything. You can take these blue switches, or these, I'm sorry, blue, these black switches out. These are, um, I 
they are Jixian. So, well, but you can, you can hear a scratch and a little pingy. Um, you can lube them and they will sound decent, uh, but there'd be a lot more work because we can also, we'd also be able to do a little bit of a silicone pour. I mean, you'd have to be quick. I'd probably have to do it in a syringe, but fill up a little bit more without going over the, the basically the ribs. Just adding a little bit more heft would make these sound a lot less plasticky. But I'm going to go ahead and switch everything out here. So I'm going to go ahead and let's go ahead and just pull everything off and start opening up the board. How about that? See, we're dealing with a fairly light and hollow um, case in there. We don't have that much room, but we do have some room. Now, so these stabilizers, while they're not awful, they actually are fairly good. Yeah, I mean, I for these, I, I have not found the need to tape mod these yet because they, they're almost like made specifically for the little magnetic plate keep the screws on this side all right that one's too big of a bit let's go with here and i always seem to miss one there and it's like my brain just the lines went out. I think that's all of them. Yeah. All right. So now we can go ahead and take a look at what we've got in here. We'll take a look at that stabilizer here in a second. But um, we've got the light diffuser over here. Um, now it actually does just sit in the plate like this. It's really just on there with pressure. So I'm going to set this aside for right now so we don't lose it. Um, let me go ahead. Yeah, let me go ahead and pull this out because it's really bugging me. All right, so there's one side and the other side. There we go. All right. That was much easier with the plate off. So, uh, as we can see here, the it's literally loose in there and this spring is really the only thing kind of keeping the plate off of the assembly mind you now it actually does have a daughter board believe it or not i mean this is a um you know what you'd call a cheaper kit but it uh, does have a daughter board so there could be i mean you might be able to cut some of the studs off and put um some uh I never noticed that. Huh. The sticker is actually covering up some holes. Anyway, um, there's there's a good possibility that you there's some more mods that could be done to this and it might be able to be made bouncy. Uh, I'm not going to try for that. Right now I'm just going to go for the best sound I can get out of this. So first things first, let's try to I remember this. So for such a cheap board to come out of the bat with a um, daughter board is 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 a pretty nice thing, um, and it lends to possibilities. Probably if you can find another PCB that this would fit in, 
Uh, and especially if you could, uh, hmm, never thought about, I guess I could 3D print a plate. But there's headers, so this definitely can be programmed. And the MCU on here is listed as a BYK816. What was that? Be? AKX76 BYK816 BT613 version 1.0 USCIY 2021 July 14th almost exactly to the day a year ago huh so let me go ahead and try to get this uh, JST cable out carefully as to not yeah it's I don't know why but some, sometimes JST cables, it's almost like, I know many times it feels like, oh, did they, they glue it in? Though I have found some that have been glued in. They really hardly ever need it because they're already pretty tight as it is. And you actually take more of a chance of pulling one of the cables out than you do of actually getting the whole connector out. it on there even though I'm gonna do the tempest tape mod I can tape right around it so in here I just got to make a little slot all right a minute what am I gonna do with this what am I going to do with you I think I mean a silicone pour but I think I could I mean well, I'd be doing a lot of cutting trying to find a quick and easy way. So I think I'm just gonna cut out some, cut out some EVA, try to go around the studs. Uh, I gotta say, I'm really tempted to just go ahead and do a silicone pour in here. I just have to tape some spots off and then I can get everything in place. Yeah, let's just do that. I'm gonna go ahead and do a silicone pour with this puppy. So let me go ahead and get that set up as this will take a while to dry. And then we'll come back to the uh, to the rest of the board. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the legs out. the holes for if it you do if you're uh, doing a silicone port or anything that has um, pull out legs uh, you want to make sure that there's no silicone in the hole if not you're going to have to be making a lot of adjustments after the silicone port by cutting out and try to make sure that you cover the entire hole usually there's like a little ridge at the bottom and that'll be a good spot for the silicone to pour out now if that does happen it's not the end of the world uh, but like I said, trying to prevent it just makes, makes the job a lot easier from the get-go, in my opinion. So yeah, just try to fold it like an L, press it down at the bottom, and make sure it's nice. Press against the sides so that it doesn't leak at the bottom. And again, like I said, if it does, it can be fixed. It's just a little bit more work. And we're gonna do the same over on this side. Like I said, usually a piece of tape does the trick.
one side and then the other. One thing that is a good idea to do. Of course, no, I can't find it. Of course. Mm. Looking for a little. Actually, this might actually do the trick. Yeah. All right. Um. When doing a silicone pour, if you have a case that's angled, try to get it straight. Um, now here it's actually not quite straight, but it's at least, it's closer to straight than if it was angled down. So um, I usually use another a switch tester, which is actually probably too low. Uh, let me see. Kind of want the line going this way to be straight. This actually seems to be perfect. All right, so we've got stickers there. Those looks like a power indicator, a power button. Um, the battery probably sat there. There's probably a, uh, um, a wireless version of this board, or at least it uses the, this case, the bottom case of it anyway. All right, so we've got that there. We also want to create a bridge there so we don't have any falling out and I'm just going to cover up the USB hole. I'm not going to actually cover up anything there because if it actually impedes we can just cut it out afterwards um, and it's just easier. The less you have to tape up the less you're going to have to work on afterwards. So this will just be so that we prevent any of the uh, silicone from pouring out of the uh, USB port. Just make sure it's not going to leak. I mean, we're barely going to get that high. And you do want to tell, you know, you do, do want to notice the differences. And when doing a silicone pour, um, obviously there's some things to consider. But like in here, we're going to go a lot deeper here than we are over here. And we don't want to go above any of these ridges on any one of these uh, because that's where it expects the plate to sit. Um, and if we go above those ridges, even though we've got a little room to play here, we don't really have that much room. So let's go ahead and pull out the measuring cup. Two part. some silicone that you basically have to throw away unless you have something already ready which I usually don't because this is my workspace so I just try to guesstimate that that's going to take a good amount I'm going to guess that's going to take roughly 40 and this is going to take about 20 so I'm going to say 60 now I'm going to say 80 total total for the whole thing that means I'm going to want 40 from each bottle that may be going too much now uh, when picking silicone, doesn't matter what the brand is, just make sure that it's A and B. Uh, the quicker setting, the better. Though if you want more time, that's great. The, the longer setting ones can literally take uh, a day or two, 24 to 48 hours to set. Um, this one takes about an hour to set. It takes about a whole eight to 12 hours to cure. You really don't want to be messing with it until it cures. And you know it cures when you can touch it and it's soft, not sticky, but still sticky. I mean, really, just let it sit. So I'm gonna go ahead and be doing this, and I'll 
come back to the rest of this um, afterwards. So go ahead and start with the A. And like I said, I'm going to gauge roughly 80 because this is a deep compartment. Uh, the previous ones I've done just with uh, uh, the, uh, I always got PE and EVA foam messed up, but the EVA foam, which works, but I've been wanting to do one for a while that's silicone, and here's my chance, so I'm trying something new. And I mean, these two bottles, I think you can get uh, on Amazon for around eight to twelve dollars, and uh, an eight, one of these, uh, I think these are quart, there's 17.6 ounces, you can do roughly about a dozen um, silicone pours, obviously it depends on the uh, the actual cavity and the size inside. I've done some silicone pores that were literally barely two millimeters thick once it was dry. So here, I've got a measuring cup. I'm gonna go up to 40 milliliters. You wanna kinda of slow down when it's getting closer so that you wanna get as close as possible to that line. I'm thinking that 40 might be a little too much. So I'm looking at how much 40 is. I think I want to go down to 30, I'll just go 60. And if I need more, then hey, I need more. So I'm gonna pour some back into the bottle here. Let's see where I'm at. A little bit more and I'll be at 30. And it's probably gonna end up needing 40 <laughs> or 80 total, so. But just trying not to waste it. I mean, not that it's super expensive, but still. All right, that's 30. Go ahead and cover that one up. I always move one to one side so you don't. I actually one time did pour two parts A and I was like, hey, why is this not setting? Just made a mess. Had to wash everything. So obviously, this stuff is very viscous, so helping it out a bit isn't. You know, you want to, because as soon as these two mix, you, you're on a timer. So, obviously this one's not mixed yet, but I'm going to go ahead and just give it a helping hand. Plus, you know, I want to get as much of a proper reading. Probably should just use two, but I'm not. Oh, well. I like to clean out the cup afterwards so I can use them. I think these are meant to be disposal. But if I can reuse something, I'm going to reuse it. Part of my budget mantra. All right, we got, I mean, not every bit, but good majority out of there. All right. Now, we're gonna do the same, 30, part B. Um, almost positive I'm gonna need more, but we'll see. And I mean, if you do spill some, once it's mixed, just let it dry. Once it dries, it's gonna be much easier to clean up than trying to clean it up when it's still liquid, unless it's obviously on something you want it off. But um, it cleans up pretty easy. Obviously get it off your hands. If you get some on your hands, you're technically supposed to use gloves. And I guess I should be setting a better example, but I usually don't. I just got some on my hands. I usually don't get some on my hands. So go figure. All right, so the timer has started now. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this finish pouring in. I'm not gonna bother to clean my hands until I've mixed it because it's all over the stick now. Should have probably had a paper towel handy. 
I didn't. Alright. Yeah, I think this is going to not quite be sufficient, unfortunately. I could be wrong, but I'm just looking at all the cavities in there. But let's at least get a cover. I could be wrong. Uh, they say stir for, I think most of them say somewhere between five minutes. Um, I usually do at least two or three minutes, and that's usually good enough. I like to just alternate going clockwise and counterclockwise. And just, I mean, there's no real visible um, indicator like some epoxies that change color. When you mix them and they're just the right color when they're ready to go. Um, this one will just, I mean, I guess it becomes a little bit more even if that, that's the case. All right, I'll come back to stirring this, but I do want to. At this point, I'm going to start touching other stuff, and I don't want to get uncured epoxy or resin everywhere. Okay. All right. Yeah, I don't think this is going to be enough. I mean, I think it'd be enough to give us enough of a surface layer. Maybe I'll do a combination. Hmm. What about that? I've been on this polyfill kick lately. I mean, it makes a big difference. It makes way more of a difference than I expected on uh, metal cases and aluminum boards. Um, really, way more than I expected. So, I'm actually surprised. And it, and it also helps with plastic cases as well. It, it, it captures, it seems to capture high-pitched, but not leave it muted. All right, I think this is pretty well mixed. So we're going to go ahead and obviously we're going to want to start with the back. So I want to fill these cavities up. Those are the deepest ones. All right, and not going for filling right now. We're just going for coverage. Getting those holes. Anything that goes over ribs, we're going to probably end up cutting it off. So. Right. See, I have completely filled it right now. I'm going to try to go for coverage. Try to stay away from the holes of the screw holes, but this is silicone. It can be pulled out afterwards with uh, fair ease. I used to always cover the screw holes, but I just found that it was extra work because sometimes I would even still get some in there. And I found that it was just, I mean, some tweezers or something. And that's it. And it comes out. All right. So I'm going to focus on these little pockets right here trying to avoid the screw holes like I said we just want to stay above those ribs because those ribs are basically what's going to hold the keyboard in place or the PCB I should say not the keyboard
Holy crap. I think we actually made just enough. I keep um, wowing myself at my ability to gauge how much volume something needs. I mean, I could have probably used a little bit more in here especially, but I can always put something right there to make up for it. Other than that, we've got a skin all over the bottom of it, which is a big plus in my book. Yeah. I'm actually very satisfied. I think it came out better than I expected it to, that's for sure. I thought I was going to be very short when I first started forming, right after I mixed. But looks like not enough. Even for this, these little cats. Probably structural. gauge here and not gauge the amount pretty good I'd say alright spoons I'll usually reuse but not these little pallets because they soak it in and clean it up off of here Throw this away. We're gonna wash this out first with some Yeah, do not uh, rinse this out in the sink just as is. You want to clean it out with some uh, rubbing alcohol works great um, before you uh, actually wash this. So yeah, that's so why I just dip my hands and rub in alcohol. And I'm going to go ahead and again. Technically, this is hand sanitizer. All right, so now, as you can see, this, uh, you don't want to move this. And you're going to want to kind of keep this as still as you can for the next, uh, at least the next two to four hours. Um, like I said, it doesn't take long to set, but you want it to fully cure before you start messing with it. If not, then you can end up with a mess. So um, I'll be back. We'll... Uh, finish up the rest of this because there's not much more we've got to tempest mod the back of the pcb we're going to add um, pe foam on top we're also going to i'm going to be trying a uh, oh, of course where is it <laughs> i put it in here yeah and we're going to be giving these a shot i usually um make from strips um, from neoprene strips I cut them and I go along and just kind of make my own custom border but I'm going to go ahead and use these for everything that's not a stabilize uh, a key with a stabilizer and uh, let's see what they I mean I got these I think there were two bucks for a bag and and they are sticky so this should be interesting so we're going to do that we're going to tape the PCB we're going to um, 
do the uh, the mods to the um, I'm gonna do the plumber's tape mod, and then we're gonna put in some. I yeah, still gotta pick some switches. I'm kind of stuck right now between going with some uh, some or uh, I mean some uh, yellows, some Gatoron Milky Pro yellows, or some Gatoron Milky Blacks, or I could try some of my KTT uh, switches that I've got a good bunch of, and I really I've only just baked barely tested them so maybe I'll go with one of those but if I go with those I'm gonna to want to probably lube them first so we'll see well, we'll come back to this and um, and see how this cure comes out here in a little while all right looks like we've got looks like we've got our silicone dried so we're gonna go ahead looks like we did spill a little but that's why I put the mat on because it almost always happens. Um, tape works, but not always perfectly. But that's not a problem. That's why we can always come back and fix these. So it looks like we got a little, little bit right there. So we're going to have to probably do a little trimming of the dried silicone in there to ensure that the legs are not going to have any impedance when uh, trying to move in there. So, the way we do this, and that's the beauty of this stuff. I mean, you can not pull it out. It's now shaped to the form of the keyboard case. So, I mean, obviously you want to try to keep it in single pieces as much as possible. But, I mean, Honestly, in my opinion, despite the weight, it's much better than having to cut uh, little pieces. Although some people might enjoy that cut, and so, you know, who am I to say? But personally, I prefer doing it this way when possible. Sometimes it's just not a feasible thing to do. All right, I'm going to go ahead and take both of these tape pieces out. Because what we're going to do is just we're just going to take a little chunk out of there we want to make sure that it doesn't impede with the legs. I'm going to put it back down there for a second so you can see how it ends up fitting because it's, you know, custom shaped, custom molded to this. So I'm going to do the same over on this side. Oh, I forgot to get it right there. Oh, because it's a little different. Okay, it's a closed off chamber. I didn't really want to get too much on top of this. So. extra sticky where you're not supposed to be and not sticky enough where you were supposed to be anyways All right. working on another kit in my actual office all right so in order to I mean we could the easiest would be just cut that piece out right there and then you're not gonna have to worry about because see we got this hole right there put it up in an angle so you guys can see that's the hole that the um, the flip out legs go through if it's not clear right there um, it's it's gonna bind up 
and it could technically break the leg off if it's, if it's in there too tight. So the easiest thing is just to cut a little sliver out. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of mark that spot by making a hole, pressing with the tweezers in there. So we kind of know where we're at. And we're just gonna cut like a little notch out. cut it out on this side now you can see how it's nice and clear down into there and we're going to do the same over here put you back in and mark the hole looks like it spilled out there a little bit too no problem side of that one. good all right but we won't know for sure yeah I think that's good but let's go ahead and just put the leg on in there and just make sure all right so now we know we got that side let's get this side Make sure we know where the hole's at. Yeah, a little bit slipped out of there. That um, almost always happens. Unless I can get a really good spot all the way around the hole with a piece of tape, there's usually going to be some that leak, so it's no big deal. Like I said, it's easy to fix because it's a custom fit. And if you really don't want to mess with something little, just cut that whole piece out um, and put a piece of foam if you want. I mean, it's not like it, that little bit's going to make too much of a difference when it comes to the sound profile so, so here I go cutting on one side cutting on the other and trying to pull out a wedge All right. this is pretty thick but that sh looks like it should do it yeah it's a little, still a little over the hole let me see how bad is it if I push it all the way in Yeah, if you can see it through the hole, then it's not good enough. So this one needs a little bit more taken off this bottom part. All right. Nope, I can still see some. Sorry. When I hit it, it can shake, and it literally shaped for a long time. Um, all right, one more cut. I think on the other side.
Oh, okay, I see. I see what's going on. Alright, let me do this side. Hard to see the line, but it's there. Just try to cut the slot off on either side. And cut that whole square piece out. Or wedge, whatever it is. Now. There's a little bit sticking out right there. Alright, this can might as well just be two pieces at this point. And then here, make it a little easier for us to just trim that. should also. Obviously these are things I like to check before, you know, closing up the board then going, oh man. Alright, so as we can see, the legs are good. All right, that just needs a little bit of alcohol to get those stains from this out. Alright, so now we have a nice um, a nice skin as we could say, because I mean it is thin, thinner up here, but just to go ahead and test. Um, the daughter board goes here. Now, let me see if we're gonna have to cut out. Any. Oh, again, sorry about that. So the daughter board goes here, and it appears that we're good. All right. So we don't have to cut any of the silicone for this daughter board. And let's see about, oh, got some tape on there. Can you leave? All right, it's something. I wanna say it's this wire. I really want to take this off, but and every little bit I've tried, it just wants to, the wires wants to come loose, and I just would rather not take the chance. So, let's see if I can get this to sit here, and this to, yeah, because what it's doing is pushing the board out on this cable. I think that's what's stopping it from closing because it's sitting on top of a rib because it wants to go over like this. Hold it over on this side. Until I get ah. So basically I'm just going to have to make sure I remember that cable giving me a hard time before in another mod. But as we can see, this is not um, sitting quite on top. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do the Tempest mod to this. And then I think I'm going to put some polyfill in there as well because I don't think it's going to hurt anything. Um, so yeah. Let me. I want to make sure this is all sitting in. But as we saw, the board was still loose. It wasn't as loose as it was before, but it's still loose. So we've got room. Um, almost tempted to do some burger mounts, but I don't really think that's going to make much of a difference, to be quite honest. 
since some of these aren't, I don't know, we'll see. Let's go ahead and do a Tempest mod and uh, others belong. All right, so this is the bag. Obviously, this isn't what we want. We want this. All right, and we're going to have to make a lot of holes for all these studs. But since we've got this on here, then we just got to worry about these. I mean, that's where this goes, and we'll put a little bit of tape on there, just in case. I don't think the polyfill is conductive, but it's best not to take a chance. So... Now, since there is still a little bit of space and we're not really going to get any flex out of here, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of... kind of been going crazy with this stuff because I'm just surprised at... I mean, literally there's like nothing to it, but it does make a difference when it comes to the sound. It doesn't mute it. It takes away the hot. funny one of my cats thought I had bought it a new friend <laughs> so I'm not gonna put much in here doesn't really need much I believe All right. yeah one of my cats just like when I opened this bag was like what is there a Cat in that? Do you have a cat in the bag? What's going on? Poor thing was uh, definitely a little confused, um, but I think all is well now. All right, so uh, let's try to keep as much of this. The only thing about the polyfill, but I mean it's easy enough. You have to clean it up afterwards because I mean, there will be little wisps here and there, but. I think we'll be okay. Okay. But, all right. Well, the silicone one of the nice things about it is that it gave it the board now has some uh, definitely weighs more so it feels more substantial uh, port still nice and lined up looks like the cable is sitting on the right side there so we still got some of this stuff coming up but I said it's just polyfill so well, I don't want to be pulling it all out through one hole <laughs> Pull a little bit, it's like pulling a. Alright, come on, that's enough. I think that's enough. Alright, 
one more thing I wanted to do. Go ahead and grab the plate. And then grab some of this. this thing from rattling all over the place. That's kind of a pain in the butt, huh? Yeah, this P film feels a little bit thicker. I don't want to be breaking any switches, so I'm just going to go ahead and use this one. This one feels more like what I'm used to. It's like thinner than paper, so I'm just going to go ahead and go with my gut and use something that I know. These edges definitely need to be cleaned. There's sticky stuff all over them. Of course, I'm going to make. Ah. Luckily, we have it. Uh, that's about as straight as we're going to get down there. So, let's go at this corner. Up there. Alright, looks good enough. so it doesn't mess with the spring. Uh, 
All right. <clears throat> now we're going to try something new. Oh, I'm just blind. All right. I'm not sure how many are in a pack, but I ordered these. I usually use the uh, strip of neoprene. I don't want to go digging for it right now. And I just create strips going across and then make strips going uh, vertically and horizontally. So um, these just are basically just for each key. And they seem to be actually, let's see. I'm going to assume those little ledges are for the spots where the key switch would come off. So I'm going to assume they go like this. Right. So it looks like one pack should be enough for one TKO. All right. And obviously I'm going to avoid doing these at the uh, keys that are stabilized. So this is a little interesting. Yeah, I usually use the, the neoprene, neoprene strips that come with the adhesive backing. And so this is a new one on me. Hopefully it's uh, worth the effort. I mean, it didn't take that long. So I'm not, not at all dissatisfied. Not at all. All right, so right now the key. <clears throat> and now for the time of truth. Just a bit of a trim around the edges because it does seem to be just a tad too big. be sticking out and that'll bug me so and one more trim on the side and on the top
All right. Now we don't have any pieces. Try to sneak out for a peek. Now let's go ahead and line this up and see how much fun we're going to have getting to those screw holes. Because we are, we are tight. But I think we should be fine. on this plate perfect it's just slides in like butter after tolerance issues I've been dealing with for the past couple of days this is a pleasant change all right let's go ahead and put one in the middle too do, 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 do. So you have nice and easy that goes in that's how a switch should go in plate should not prevent the switch from going all right, now, got a mess load of screws for you. All right, so it looks like we've got everything in place. Everything seems nice and buttoned up. Um, more hollow and you know what since um, I already started using these uh, milky blacks um, I'm gonna guess that a lot of people should at least be familiar with the mil milky black so I think I've got enough to go ahead and cover this but uh, let's go ahead and give it a shot huh? <laughs> 